We yes, honor Lord. you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father, because you are God and you are the King. Yes, Jesus. The God of all grace. Yes, Lord. Unto your eternal glory, you saved us from sin and you brought us onto this platform yes, that Jesus. we can be able to reason together today. Yes, Lord. In all that we can think the yes. sufferings of this life. Yes, Lord. That you are out to restore us every day yes, with your strength. Lord. Yes. Oh, that we can stay steadfast in this calling that you have presented before us. Hallelujah. What then Hallelujah. shall we say in this yes, response? Lord. Yes, Lord. That you have told us, if you are with us, who can be against us? Jesus. There is none. And because of this assurance, we know that the breakthroughs will be there. I worship you for your sons and daughters, for them that have taken out time to be here this evening. Oh, glory and honor be given unto thee for life yes. in abundance. Yes, Jesus. We present ourselves to you, Father, as living sacrifices, and that our spirit will bear witness with the spirit that we are your children. No one can pluck us out of your hand yes, because you so much loved us yes, and you came. Oh, to get us out of the pit of hell that we can sit and be called the princes and the princesses. Therefore, glory, therefore, honor and adoration be ascribed to thee alone, the beginning and the end, called the Alpha and the Omega. Thank you, Lord, Father God, because we are your children and we are here for service. As we worship and bless you, Lord, Father, I know that in return, you are going to bless us for yeah. being here. Yes. And let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody, Amen. welcome. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Susie, for the opening prayer. Welcome, Apostle Fonda, and everybody <clears throat> on the line. <clears throat> We just had to go ahead and get started because we have lots of reports here so that we'll get done um, on time as much as possible. So if you are just joining, we share the agenda for today. The recording had not started. Let's just share it again before we go into it. So we are done with the opening prayer and worship. Um, well, the welcome is already done as well. So presentation of reports, Tagnam executives had their own evaluation. So the report is going to be presented in five minutes. Sister Bessem Ebod, um, I don't know if somebody can try to contact her again. She comes next with the sisters, uh, with the, for the children. Pastor Zhang Enonyaket for the youths. Intercession Evangelist Helen. Praise and worship Pastor Sama. Um, Apostle Fonda or Pastor say please, one of you should help us to reach out to Pastor Sama. Dikin Diambong, five minutes. Welcome, Table Brother Wanos. Report is here, five minutes. Hospitality Lady Gloria is here, five minutes. Host Pastors, Pastor Sosia is here, five minutes. And then general questions and answers, and then we close. So it's a good thing that we are recording this so that when our next convention comes, we we'll just refer to this video in case we did not take note of certain things. So we're going to start with a five minute executive, uh, Tacnam executive presentation of their report. So Apostle Fonda um, assigned me to be the secretary of that, um, of that meeting. And Pastor Sosie was the, was it Pastor Sosi who assigned me to be the secretary because Pastor Sosi was the chair in the in the absence of Apostle Fonda? Okay, so these are the following points. I'll just present them in point format. I'll just present them in point format. So um, on Wednesday, the suggestion was to move that Wednesday meeting that we used to have to Thursday morning in order to reduce the length of the convention. 
because we used to have a meeting with the guest speakers on Wednesday before the convention starts on Thursday. So the suggestion is that we move that Wednesday meeting to Thursday morning so that will reduce the length of the convention. Then Thursday turned out what's more than expected on that Thursday. And we are suspecting that the probable reason is that <clears throat> it was a Tag Friends 10th anniversary. You know, it's exciting to hear about 10th anniversary. So many people wanted to be a part of it. That's one thing we did not think of. So the turnout was more than expected. The Pastor Summers Church was really full. Um, and then another issue was that the convention held on a separate venue from the main convention venue. Some people actually had to go to the main venue before they were sent to the to Pastor Summers Church. So that was an issue as well. As a result of this more than expected then out, there was food shortage as well um, from the hospitality committee. And then it was also noted that there were no drinks. So maybe when the hospitality committee is presenting their report, they will address that issue right there. Then evaluation for the Friday from the perspective of TACNAM executive streaming was scheduled for the evenings only. But requests started coming in on Friday morning for streaming to be done as well. So we were not prepared for that. We had to scramble around and we thank God that Prophet Manasseh was there with his equipment in his car. He just had to go and bring them out and set up and rescue the situation. Um, sound quality and volume issues in that host church. The sound quality was not good. Our musicians, their volumes were just out of the roof. So that was pointed out. Evening session is better at 7 p.m. So in the program, evening sessions were supposed to start at 6 p.m. So we noted that we never succeeded to start at those 6 p.m. So we instead targeted starting at 7 p.m. So next time we'll not even bother to put 6 p.m. We'll just put 7 p.m. right there. Then exaggerated items like opening prayer, et cetera. Take say, for example, somebody is assigned to come and give the opening prayer. The person comes, tune a song, read scripture, and then give an extensive opening prayer, all of that. So that was also pointed out that certain items were prolonged. Then Saturday, the need to eliminate the coordinator role to make for more time, especially on Saturday evening. Um, the coordinator was tuning one song after another and time was really going on. So there was a suggestion that we should eliminate the, uh, the role of a coordinator. At the beginning of the service, all those who are taking part just gather and they are told you are coming after this person and this person is coming after that and things we may be able to save some time for that. Then children's presentation was a little bit long. So some people complained that the chosen children's presentation was um, a little long. So um, on the Tag Friends channel, we have broken down that video into the different components. So this is the children's presentation here. You can see that it's 27 minutes. Some people were saying that they went for up to an hour, but they went for about 27 minutes. They were scheduled to go for 15 minutes. They went for 27. Youths were scheduled for 15 minutes. They went for 11. The sisters were scheduled for 15 minutes. They went for 11 as well. So those were the various times that they took. Okay, then the need for more round the year programs for our children and youth. So we are realizing that a lot of our children are growing up into their youth. So having just this short segment for the convention once every two years will not really serve them much. And in our local churches, um, we don't have effective youth programs. So we are hoping that uh, this these two will be able to be handled, um, especially at the TACNAM level where uh, national coordinators of this are expected to be appointed soon so that they can be coming up with programs to help connect our children and our youth. Okay, then Sunday late start is regrettable. So we were scheduled to start on Sunday 
were, we were scheduled to start on Sunday at 12, but we ended up starting at past one because it was not our venue. So the host had a lot of control over that. And picnic, a few brethren left after the service. If a few brethren left after the service were not part of the picnic, and then the picnic also started late because the service started late. Then preacher schedules and flights, too long connecting flights, um, direct flight change by airline due to weather conditions. So the flight of the speakers had some connecting uh, flights, but that was not the original plan. It was just because there were weather conditions, and so the airlines, and so the airlines rescheduled and caused those long connecting flights. <clears throat> there was a suggestion that Prophet Manasseh should handle both the national and domestic, both the international and domestic flights, so that everything is done by one person in order to ease certain difficulties. Then also there was a suggestion or a recommendation that assemblies should sponsor their main pastors or, and pastor couples to conventions and retreats. There were some discussions that were held on that. So this point was brought up in order to ease some who might have some difficulties and things like that. Then for finances, um Pastor Innocent reported that just about 50% of the pledges at the convention had been paid. Hopefully that number has gone up by now. This second portion of this report was written at the beginning of August, and now we are toward the end of August. So maybe he too will have a comment to give um, toward the end on this. Okay, so that was the report from the... Um, from the perspective of the Tacnam executives. And I don't think Sister Bessem is here yet. I don't think Pastor Zhang Enoniaket is here yet. If any of them come in, we'll take them in. Evangelist Helen will go to you for intercession. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Pastors, good evening, good evening. I just want to bless God for this evening. Um, this time of evaluation for the intercession. Um, the first night that we met, I uh, think uh, Pastor Zhang and uh, Pastor Divine Nopoku at Pastor John Summer's place, we really uh, prayed, we interceded, and we plan to do the same when we move to the new location, but there were a lot of um, I uh, would want to say um, movements that cause an infringement for us to come together again and pray and pray to, as we plan to. And then also we were looking for, we spoke actually, but we could not really intercede the way we did the first day. Uh, that is what I can say. The first day was very successful, but in the new location, because it was just too much going on at the same time, and they, they themselves were having transportation issue to, to come to the new location on time for us to uh, stand in the gap and pray. It was kind of a challenge, um, which on the side, they, they, there was no way to help it out. Nevertheless, um, we, whenever we came, and I for one, because I won't say for them, I, could not have, I didn't have time to pray with them when we got to the new location. It was a zigzag movement. We really didn't have time to touch and agree like that. So um, I wanted to put this out that um, next convention coming on, if we're going to be in the same location, I think it's going to ease us to pray together, the intercessory group to meet to pray. Um, also, we, we did intercession when before the services started at the very beginning, which I, I think it was really a success. But for an intercessory group to really pray before the service start or pray while the service is going on, it was a challenge in a new location because of the space. We didn't have a place where we could really meet. Both rooms everywhere was occupied. So that's my own report I want to bring forth. 
and i'm just trusting that next year next year next year next year i think next year or next the year convention. after next mm -hmm. next convention mm -hmm. um we'll be in a location at a location where we can really have a place where we can pray okay thank you thank you so much evangelist helen on that report okay pastor sama is not here yet so we are going to go to Dekin diambong um Dekin diambong five minutes and as Dekin diambong comes up um we are going to let's see here if i can pull this up for Dekin diambong the ushers committee did a wonderful job in the presentation of in the presentation of the convention attendance. This was really amazing, right? Here. All of this was done by Zikin Diambong and his people in the convention um, ushers committee. Okay, Zikin Diambong, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, my pastors and brethren. Good evening to everyone. Uh, I pray I'll be able to stay in the constraints of the five minutes. We have an elaborate report from uh, the OSHA's committee. It was, and we, we had to break down this report into four volleys. That is an overview, difficulties encountered, suggestions, and then appreciation. Overview, so the OSHA's committee held its pre-convention meeting on May 18, 2022 with Lady Gloria as chair. At this meeting, the leader, the lead OSHA was announced and the duties of the OSHA were enumerated and discussed. Strategies were also put in place for the smooth running of the convention. Okay. These duties were as follows, assist in the sitting of members and, and visitors, serve the needs of pastors and leaders, attend to the needs of members, visitors, guests, assure safety during altar calls, adjust room temperature if necessary, help collect and count church finances, ensure First aid is given to anyone injured in the church. Provide microphones for church participation. Give direction to, to rest restrooms. Clean and arrange or organize sanctuary before and after service. And then last but not the least, the statistics of the attendance for each session or service. This com the committee members unanimously certified that the above duties were well executed and the convention was a success. However, our responsibilities did not go without challenges. The reason for the, for the next volley of our report. Two, difficulties and challenges encountered. The sizes of the different venues gave ushers a lot of strain offering seats to members, visitors, and guests. Availability of ushers. Some of the members of this committee were involved in other committees, notably the praise and worship team, certainly known can serve two masters at a time. It was a heavier load to the few who were regular. Tardiness. This was a big issue because those who were on time had to move or to be moved from their seats because they are, because other respected members and invitees had to be given the privilege. Disobedience. Some members and visitors often refused to take sitting instructions from ushers. General discipline during the service or sessions. Too much movement hampered the smooth recording of attendance statistics and even sitting arrangements. The use of phones or phones ringing during service or sessions was another attitude of gross indiscipline. Three, suggestions. This committee suggests that evaluation of venues in, accord in accordance with current uh, attendance statistics 
be made before scheduling is done. We also suggest that in spite of this, in spite of the zeal to serve, members should not pick up responsibilities or functions that will go on simultaneously. This committee also suggests that members should request time off from their professional commitments so they can fully participate at the convention, especially when they are called to serve. Lastly, the OSHA's committee understands that phones have become the help and companion of everyone, yet we are convinced that one could stay away from these phones while having an encounter with our creator. We may also not hide behind reading the Bible from our phones and deem it necessary to operate it in church. Fourth and the last volley of this report, appreciation. Our sincere appreciation to the host pastors, Pastor Sosie and Sama and John Sama for the guidance and encouragement they gave the ushers. We want to appreciate Lady Gloria for the powerful takeoff that led the ushers to complete the race. Last and not the least, we sincerely commend the efforts of brethren who were not part of this committee, but seeing our need at, at some point, they jumped in to give us a push to the end. Amongst these were Brother Wonderful Nguena, Brother Wano, Brother Siewe, and Sister Yemi Siewe. Thank you, everyone, for the Usher's Committee, Dickin Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dickin Emmanuel, for that presentation of the report. Thank you. Um, we skipped uh, the the youth. Sister Efun, let me say, Sister Efu, are you going to present for your husband, or we should wait for him? Because both of you were in that committee. Sorry, um, I'm in a place where I can't talk right now. I'm actually at work. Okay. Could you please reach out to him? I did reach out to him a few days ago, and he was preparing for this meeting. Please. Okay, I will. I'm sure. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. So welcome table, Brother Wano. So Brother Wano could not make it. He had a prior arrangement, but this is his report. He is the leader of the welcome table, the table that gave out all the items and t-shirts and so on. So he says, greetings, everyone. Here is the welcome committee convention evaluation. I could not make it to this meeting due to prior engagement. The Welcome Committee did a fantastic job of welcoming people, handing out convention folders, uh, distributing t-shirts, goodies, the goodies here are the convention items, the booklets, pens, and so on, and helping wherever there was a need. For example, it was so encouraging to see the Welcome Committee step in to support the ushers, um, just as Jikin Jambong has mentioned, cleaning, and setting up of the rooms for the children, et cetera. So the welcome committee uh, double task in those various roles. These are just a few amongst many things that the welcome committee members were doing. He says, we had some challenges such as not having a convenient location at the entrance of the church for the welcome table. So everybody's making a comment about the setup of the venue. It was really difficult to track participants who registered through their local Tagnam churches during during free t-shirt distribution. I don't think that people registered through their local Tagnam churches. Don't. Then the table below summarizes the the survey responses of the welcome committee members. So the welcome committee actually made a survey and gave it out to members to fill out. So what we are reading below, okay. So what we are reading below is 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 um, came from the responses of the convention participants as collected by the welcome committee. Okay, number one, what went well? Just love the supplies, the quality of the booklets, the pens, 
and the towers and so on. We are grateful to Lady Gloria who worked with Pastor Kema in China to present those things. So people love them. They love that everyone was ready to help. Then what went well? Number two, the use of Tacnam pastors evangelists as speakers. So the speaker lineup, people appreciated that. That one really went well, the choice of speakers and the like. And then great praise and worship. And then free t-shirts. Well, actually those t-shirts were not free. They were free for registered um, members. The registration included that. Then convention was peaceful and safe with lots of opportunities of meeting the brethren. So these are the things that convention participants thought went well. Then what didn't go so well? No space to set up the welcome table. So items could, so items could be displayed appropriately and more order at the table t-shirt distribution not tracked properly. So that didn't go well, lack of space. So it hindered those things. Second thing that didn't go well, limited planning. It looks like there was no planning committee. So we discussed this already at the TACNAM level. We'll be sure to set up a, plan, um, a planning a committee for a convention that is being done everywhere else, planning committee. Then location was not good. The church setup needed a lot of work no suitable place for welcome table. He has already mentioned that. Then he said, Pastor Julius and Lady Gloria seems to have a lot on their plate. Would be nice to see the other Tacnam pastors be proactive and, and supportive before, during, and after the convention. So these are the observations of the convention and participants. I think the host pastors too, Pastor Sama and Pastor Nsosie in particular, they had a lot on their plates as well. Then some Tagnam pastor seems to be interested in just sitting up front and never going around to greet people and check on how things were going. So these are the things that convention participants were, were reporting. And then the pastors and their spouses were not sitting together. So pastors, your people want to see you sitting together with your wife. Allowing someone to advertise their business scheme without proper vetting. Okay, we know this incident right here and we have already addressed it on our forum. There was somebody who was not properly vetted. The person was brought up by a pastor and we allowed the person to the platform. So that is what is being mentioned right here. So that didn't go so well. Then how can we improve in 2024? Different location better organization and then number two have a dedicated have a dedicated planning or have dedicated planning probably avoid using new b or uncommitted folks or people to the association as committee leaders we can consider limiting the badges and welcome folders to the speakers only Consider having the convention in a bigger church premises or a hotel. So these are some of the things that convention participants are saying. No cooking or limited cooking. Consider catering services. Well, these things are good, but they also come with money. But nevertheless, these are the things that convention participants reported to the work to the survey that the welcome committee um, um, gave to them. Okay, so if you have questions, just keep them toward the end, please. We are going to move to hospitality, Lady Gloria Gwenson, five minutes. Hello, everybody. Can you all hear me? Can you yes. guys hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. All right, praise God. So hospitality, I'll go straight to the point. Um, on Thursday, and I'll, I won't repeat some of the things that were said, I'll just reinforce. Uh, on Thursday, they had mentioned there was a lack of um, food. There was a shortage of, shortage of food. Uh, we did not do appropriate projection for food on Thursday. And so 
uh, we ran out of food on Thursday, so we had to make some adjustments and have people from out of state to be fed while the people locally um, had to wait or eat afterwards. And we also lacked uh, enough helpers uh, in the pre-planning phase of the convention when it came to hospitality for the meetings that were called by Mama Sosie, um, uh for all of us um, to come. We had very few uh, people in attendance, so it was hard to have a good hospitality uh, set up prior to the convention. Um, we had multiple meetings, but very few help, uh, uh, few hands. Um, food was, uh, overall, it was good. No, uh, nobody complained about the taste of the food. So people said the food that was served was good. They appreciated that. Um, uh, for the drinks, uh, we, nobody was assigned to purchase the drinks in the uh, for the hospitality team. So we the one person that was supposed to do that um, did not get to the assignment. So we had to buy drinks like as we went along. And so uh, for future, that was set aside as something that need to be planned and need to be given to not just the women to do, but the men to help in the area of drinks. Um, so, Lack of enough help during the planning phase of okay, I already said that for hospitality. Overall, the women who were committed to cooking and providing supplies, uh, there was a, they were very sacrificial. There were actually a few women that really stood out that people commended. You had uh, Sister Nella, Sister Nella uh, from Tacnam um, Laurel. She committed to pretty much assigning a lot of the the food items, she was contacting people privately, assigning the food and giving their names. And then she also distributed the, the money came to her. She distributed all the money and was able to come up with the finance account. We, we actually had $1,235 left over from the convention, from the $5,000 budget that was given us, partly because a lot of the people sacrificed and they gave uh, food and donation, donated food. We also had Lady Nadesh, who not only like donated like foods, um, she cooked a lot, and then she also donated pretty much all the supplies uh, for the convention, Lady Nadesh Kayaka. So that was very commendable for these women. And then the pastor's wives themselves, Mama Sosie, uh, Lady Hanan Gupkam, and all the people, um, some of the women in the churches, they really committed their time to helping. So that was uh, that was seen and commendable. <clears throat> the setup and breakdown of the spaces was really challenging, and both in both of the churches that we used, and so that was hard for us for hospitality, and even for the for the church, the host church that we use, um, we did not know that it required some setup. So uh, and, and the, with the flow of food in that environment, the setup of the tables, it was hard. Um, so there was a uh, um, there was a comment about they felt that the special guests, like our fathers of Cameroon, were not served properly, like they we typically serve. Um, they were not assigned service per day, and so we just had because again because of the challenge of getting help. Uh, in the planning phase. So we didn't have people plan like we've done in previous convention where every day we have people actually allocated for lunch and allocated for dinner, but this time it wasn't so. And so we just kind of took where whoever was there. And also for the servers that we had, they were not um, coached or trained. So in other words, they were just dishing like loads of food and then they were running out towards the end. The people that came at the tail end that were either came because they were greeting pastors or asking for prayers upstairs. Um, by the time they came, maybe now they had to like just cut, you know, give them small amounts of food. And so at the, when you had the tail, uh, end of the queue, um, we didn't have enough food. And then um, also we had some food that came late. Um, their chew soup came late, and which was kind of sad because it was scheduled for lunch on Saturday with Eru. And so because of that, it, we had to stretch the for and Eru. And so people... People that would have normally eaten like a chew instead of for an arrow didn't have food. And then when the chew came, it came closer to dinner time. And it couldn't be served at dinner time because um, the, at dinner we were serving like jollof rice and chicken. It was a lot of, it was just contrary. So they made the decision to keep it. And at the end of the day, the food was wasted because it got bad. Um, 
And then uh, the picnic, we had a lot of help. Uh, Papa Sose set up a team of men that assisted Mama, uh, Sister Mayo to for the for the hospitality, and that was very helpful. Um, but we ran out of food at the picnic as well for the meat and the ribs and, and then the puff puff. So we just, we had more turnout projected there, uh, uh, more turnout than projected. And so we kind of ran out of food at the end. And then uh, Sister Mayo can made a complaint that um, there were leftover supplies. And, and when she turned around to gather them, some people were just picking, they picked the supplies and they left with it without proper, it almost seemed like they were stealing supplies at the end. There was an outside comment that was made during a uh, hospitality uh, review that the president's representative from Cameroon was not properly acknowledged during the convention or received. Um, they, that they, the person that made the comment thought so and other people agreed. Uh, overall, that those were the highlight points without repeating what was already said. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Lady Gloria, for that presentation. So like we said, we will keep all the questions to the end. Um, finally, for those who are present here, those who are not present here, they are going to su uh, submit their report still and it will be posted on the forums and will be also kept in our files. We regret this late uh, scheduling of the convention. Fine final convention evaluation because we had some urgent meetings. I think otherwise would have had way more brethren attending like than we have today. Okay, so finally we'll go to Pastor Sosie on behalf of the host pastors. Pastor Sosie, you are on mute. Sorry, I didn't know that was okay. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I want to thank all of you who are there. Uh, for us to host the convention, uh, the time COVID-19 was walking away, um, wasn't very easy um, to secure a good location, was difficult get a picnic ground, difficult. So there were a lot of difficulties. We encountered even to uh, get hotels for uh, people who needed and transportation. All these things came up with a lot of difficulty, coordinating people who were arriving and when they will arrive and all was tough. We actually also did not have a lot of manpower um we had to help a lot of other committees to be able to function well just as we heard in the reports but when i weigh up all of this i think that uh, this convention was a success um the very unfriendly uh, um, leadership of the church where we had the convention also contributed in uh, the lots of difficulties that we we had. I did everything myself to see the pastor of that location. I never met him and I called him forever. Didn't care about me. So it was also very difficult to get a place where we could do the hospitality table. The table even that we bought, uh, which could fit there up to now that we are talking, uh, I have not been able to recover that table from that location because of the unfriendly way. Uh, so we don't have that table up to now, but I would want to say that generally, in my opinion, the convention went well. Uh, we tried to catch up with time. I can hear one complaint there about the presentation of the president of the representative of the president of the church. We many times ran out of time and we tried to catch up because of the way presentations were made. So um, I would say that contributed to us not giving the 
provision that was necessary as we know how we used to give it. So everybody will try to just not throw it too much out there so that the church in Cameroon will think that we, we did not give respect to whom respect was due. Um, I think that much of what the various committees faced as a problem came up from <clears throat> the way the location was, the food, how to distribute and things like that was very tough, very, very tough. But I think we, we can be able to look forward for the next time to get a place that is going to be more conducive for activities to be carried out. As Osama and myself, we were really stretched. But God gave us the grace, gave us the strength to be able to meet up. And I think I did not meet people who complained directly to me that things were very wrong. I pray that COVID-19 would not come again to limit a lot of things that we could have done in advance. <clears throat> Getting that picnic place was also tough. We got it at the maybe towards the last week for the convention to start and uh, it was a challenge. So I want everyone who faced difficulties and who did not see things go the right way or the way they would have thought to just um, look up to God and pray that things will be better the next time we meet. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Pastor Sosie. Um, if we go to the question and answer session, Pastor Zhang Enonyake just came in, so we'll take him before we go into the question and answer session. Pastor Zhang Enonyake will give a five minute report on behalf of the youth committee. So, Pastor Zhang, over to you. Uh, but praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, please uh, forgive me to uh, join at this time. Uh, thank God I was able to do so. So, uh, brethren, just briefly, um, I wouldn't begin by saying there's not much to report, um, but we will not use up all our time and we'll yield back once I'm done. Um, number one is that the Youth and Young Adults Program at the Tagnam Convention 2022 was like the baby of the program, I would note. To say that it was something we we're trying to set up and get going. Like I mentioned during the convention, at the wrap up of our program, is our desire and what's our prayer once we were called upon to set up this program for the young adults that this becomes not something that is ephemeral, but something that is lasting, that is here to stay. And secondly, not only to stay during the convention, but something that would affect and impact our local churches, local Tacnam churches all over the United States, already established and those that will be by the grace of God. The focus of our First of all, the uh, preparation for the um, program. I will begin taking our, our leaders' uh, lead, um, just readjusting my own uh, bullet points here, it is that what, what things did not go well? Number one, and to put it bluntly to the committee today, our preparation was not standard. Our preparation wasn't standard. And of course, there are many things which uh, we ourselves have uh, learned from this. One of them, self-evident, adequate preparation. Number two is that the, our communication, only preparation, communication, which is a sub-aspect of that preparation, you know, uh, needed a, a little more touch, a little more work to make sure that the the program went smoothly that is transitions to set into sessions uh was not that smooth because of that particular aspect communicating what happens next number three is 
uh, the, the availability of manpower persons to take charge of the programs as they went on. We were there on the ground already, but sometimes, uh, I think it was on Saturday, Saturday, you know, one of the brethren settled to schedule, sorry, to take care of the session, had issues with transportation and things like that. The second one was all, all the programs that came into play during the convention that they had to attend to, so it cannot perturb our own flow. So that to us was a little bit of hindrance. But thank God we we're able to readjust and catch up, and then our, our sessions continued, you know, by, by God's grace. Um, that those were the, the things that we noted as things we could definitely improve upon to make sure that we are not just uh, doing things for doing sake, but doing a good job. You know, the things that will impact our young people and the church tomorrow. What went well for us, according to our own estimation. And again, we noted that the others will be able to uh, chime in to help this uh, program, aspect of our, our program. Um, those, who, the, those who were contacted to, to help us during this program for the young adults, you know, they, we want to commend their commitment to it. Even in the midst of being pulled here and there, I will note that uh, like on Saturday, uh, one of our main presenters also had to present to the main uh, congregation upstairs and she had to be pulled you know okay let me know when time is and so forth going back and forth is it time so we had to be readjusting on the fly as we went you know so it, it kind of yeah uh, though i'm reporting that as as good with respect to those who participated to contributors it also can go into a negative column with respect to the general flow of the program and uh, so i go back to that positive i thank i want to appreciate all those who contributed to speak to the young people in a way that will impact the church and their lives in particular, and also our uh, community and that generation, you know, on issues that uh, we finally settled upon, touching on their spiritual lives, touching on issues of social import, you know, that are destroying youth out there today, and uh, touching also on their uh, contribution to the church and to society, their positive contribution. So we appreciate it. And, and uh, on that light, also the next point I have here is that uh, following logically from that, we want to thank uh, our brethren who, who joined us, even as we literally prepared and continue to prepare on the fly as we went on to put this together. You know, we, we appreciate those brethren who stepped in. One of them, I would want to mention na a name here, is Pastor Nupuku. And once uh, he length of this thing, he stepped, jumped in and brought positive contribution from work he had been doing before that could be of use to us, of import to us, you know, and uh, uh, we want to appreciate that also. And uh, the last but one point I would, I would note is, is this, in general, in general, we, we saw that the participation of the youth and young adults for the second day, which was that Saturday, was very encouraging, very encouraging. And again, I moved this from what could have been a negative to the positive because that day was, it's like a, was like an open day where more families and more people came in. And we saw that the young people uh, came once they were called, you know, to, to come downstairs to be with us. So we appreciate that we see as a positive that they are willing to come together and last but one point after the program you know we're able to throw it back to the young adults who were willing to take it to themselves to establish communication between them and what do we mean by this they were able to set up what was in our mind first of all about a little bit was to set up a group me page for them to maintain contact and communication after the tax that convention 2022, but they took it from us and on their own initiative uh, decided to open and uh, to set up a, a group me page for the girls for communication. And I look at this because while we're still struggling here to say, what do we do? What do we up? They already done it. You know, and the other were trying to do it and uh, add our other leaders to that forum so that they can 
we can have the same page. And uh, I'll end last point by saying again, we thank others to help us, for the rest, Sister Manka, Pastor Nupu, and the uh, audience in the house, uh, Mr. Tanya and Mr. Nupu. Oh, so it looks like our brother's line just went out. Um, it was really uh, coerced towards the end. But I think we could hear most of what he said. I want to thank God for Pastor Nopuku. He was discovered just one month or so to the convention, and he was preparing to bring his family to the U.S. Yet he readjusted himself. Not only was he a part of the convention, he was also an active member. He is not here tonight, but we really appreciate him for his for his commitment to his vision. Um, Apostle hello, hello, brother. Uh, sorry, sorry, I got cut off, but I, I'm done. Practically, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, I got cut off from uh, yeah. Yes, we we actually lost you toward the end of the acknowledgement when you. Oh, okay. Were, yes. Okay. Yes, so we actually got everything. Thank you so much. Oh. Looks like you underestimated yourself. You thought um, you will not use all of your time, but you did justice. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And it was exciting to note that the young people were taking matters in their own hands to create that a forum. So um, any question that we have, we, um, we, are, we are just about to get into the question and answer session. My okay. own observation too with the young people is that even when we got to the picnic, they decided to go and be playing together uh, yeah. at one location. So they were already creating that that connection among them. And we pray that Tag Friends and Tag Now will take advantage of this and help to fortify that. Thank you. Thank you so much. So brethren, um, Apostle Fondo sent a text message that Pastor Sama is standing as the father to one of the members getting married in his church at the traditional wedding taking place this evening. So he's not able to be here. So we'll get his own report. We'll get Sister Bessem's report and post this too on the forum for everybody to see. So we move into general questions, answers, and suggestions right now. So the floor is open. Let us ask our question. We've heard all the reports that have been presented. Uh, the following reports were presented from the TACNAM executives, from Pastor Zhang Enonyaket for the youth, Evangelist Helen Intercession, um, Oshas Dikin Diambong, Welcome Table, Brother Wano, Hospitality Lady Gloria, Host Pastors, Pastor Sosie. So those are the reports that were presented. Does anybody have a question, comment, suggestion? I have a comment. Yes, Apostle Fonda. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody. Excellent report, my brother Ndiambo. That was so powerfully presented. I love that. Uh, I was not at the convention, followed online, but some of those, I want to just pick on one point. The uh, point that was mentioned regarding not welcoming the uh, representative of the president properly. It was brought up as an issue, but there was no suggestion on how properly welcoming the president is because I remember that even the video that I had pre-done recognized that the president was not coming and also recognized that this person that is present here is representing the president. And I was watching on Facebook uh, live when it was happening, and I saw the vice president mention their names one after the other, who they were and all that. So sometimes we, oh, when these uh, complaints come up, then a follow-up suggestion on how it should be done will really help leadership. So, but in all, I think that the biggest uh, problem that we had was location. If we had a big one solid location, a lot of the things we've heard tonight will not come up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle Fonda. Okay. Brethren, the floor is open. Any question or comments, suggestions? I have a question. Yeah, Brother Paul. 
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, so I observed that uh, this is my first convention that I attended in the USA, but until this first one, I noticed that like what you have there on the background, Tag Friends International, it will have uh, Canada, UK, at the time Thailand. And then when contributions went on, I also saw that there was a request for other branches to support, or they had a, a levy to send in for the convention. But for this particular one, I, I didn't notice uh, any of these other branches included. And, and the, the thing we have for the backdrop, other branches were not mentioned there. So I was just wondering, uh, you know, what's going on. That was just an observation I made. and I. I wanted to find out. Okay, yeah, thank you so much for that. So what you see in my background is actually the logo. The logo doesn't have any name on it. That what you are referring to that has all the branches. That was a banner that was made. Um, each time that friends makes that banner, all the branches are, are um, uh, on are, it. Yes, are written on it. And also, if we made a banner, this logo would have still been there, then all the other branches would have been written separately mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. near it. Then for contributions, I did not bother contacting Thailand because since you left Thailand, nothing has been going on there um, as per what you told me about. So that's why I thought maybe there's no activity there. Uh, and I'm glad you brought this up. I did contact the new president of Tag Friends UK, the wife of Brother Tala. Brother Isaac. Tala, Isaac, Isaac Tala, yes. Um, she said she will get to their branch and then get back to me. So I waited and waited and waited until the convention, until as we speak, I still did not hear anything. So I just left it alone. And then Tag Friends Canada is also going through um, a bit of difficulty now. Their leader stepped down, and then there is one sister who is coordinating now and just working with a few brethren. The sister, I did not even tell her anything. She just took it on herself to try to encourage people to contribute, yet nothing came up. So I just left that alone as well. So, All right. yeah, so regarding the other branches, that is a summary I can give. All right, thank you. No problem. Okay, brethren, convention evaluation. Um, Pastor Enonyaket, I have a question for you. So the, um, I was about to ask the forum that was announced to be created to keep the young people connected so yes. so we are glad to hear that the young people took it upon themselves and so uh, ha, um, are the, have the leaders been added and how is the forum going as of as of uh, initial evaluation what we call it a uh, three months uh, ch checking uh they the essentially the young adults are on the forum now, the one that they grouped me for the uh, WhatsApp forum that was being created initially had us, uh, some of the leaders, added to it. But the one that was set up by the young adults themselves, you know, we just now started adding the leaders in it. So eventually, all the leaders will be, well, not all, I, I rephrase that. The, the leaders involved in the youth and young adult ministry will be added to this. And uh, as I speak, this is up to date because as of yesterday, I contacted one of the young adults on it and they told us that is being done. So I'll, I'll be in touch with respect to that to make sure we are all on it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, brethren, questions, answers, suggestions?
So, um, Lady Gloria, this one is for you, the sister with the Achu. <laughs> was she contacted and found out why there was that big failure and what can be done? The pastor's a wife that was directly related to that assignment talked to her personally about the lateness and the consequences of the lateness. And so, but I did not have any direct um, relationship or contact with Wumi Deachu, but the pastor's wife did and she contacted her. She just, apparently she worked that day or something and then cooked late and then by the time she was done, there was an issue there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Pastor Innocent, any comment from the finance department? <clears throat> Good evening to all. Uh, as far as finance is concerned, if I want to just begin where we, the Tagna pastors had a meeting, except you want me to break everything down again. Is that what you want? Well, just so people don't leave with questions on their minds, maybe you could just give a summary that touches a little of everything. Okay, in that case, let me quickly go to my computer here. Actually, uh, if the convention, let me just talk about a convention. Uh, with regard to finance, we had money coming in from the different uh, Tagnam churches that the contributions started coming in from Tagnam churches and all the contributions from Tagnam churches was $3,100. All the contributions made by Tacnam pastors and their wives was $7,073. And then at the convention, we started offering on Thursday $465, Friday $591. Saturday morning, $485. Saturday evening, $1,384. And then on Sunday, we did not take offering. We just had uh, the, the appeal and we had uh, cash at that moment uh, of uh, $7,500. Then we had some pledges. Among those pledges, I'm not going to read people's names here, but uh, we've been able to redeem $9,500 of those pledges. Then we had some expenses, which I will not itemize them, but I now have a total of income. $18,673 total expenses, $13,477 and a balance of $4,196. I also received a refund of $1,235 back from the hospitality committee. I think that is just in a nutshell. Okay, amen. Thank you so much. Okay, brethren, it looks like we don't have a lot of questions. Is there anybody who? Yeah, uh, Rogelius. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this one, I, I'm not sure it'll be like a question, but that's a, uh, it's about an observation and an appeal. Okay. And when I, when I joined, I heard somebody talking about uh, hands on deck. And uh, also I noted that uh, uh, Sister Bessem is not on the line today to report on the children's ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we were neighbor, neighbors, as we call ourselves downstairs, the children's ministry and the youth and young adults ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, apart from uh, overseeing 
what was going on in my own sector with the young adults. I could also observe what took place with the children. And I just want to throw it out there with us. Uh, this, which, what, why I bring it up because it's not only during TACNAM TAC Friends Convention, but it, it looks like a recurring theme during our Christian come together. And I want to be as general as I can be because it's, it's actually quickly becoming a real and serious problem, the neglect of the children. So uh, most of the time, it comes in a way of pushing it to the parents. But well, if the parents are here, they should take care of their so forth, of their children and so forth. But no, if we have a gathering like this, I will believe that there are people among us who are called of God, by God, to be children ministers. And these ministries like this call for total sacrifice. You're going to miss other nice, quote unquote, nice things. You're going to miss some, some other aspects going on so that to see that our children, the young ones, our future is taken care of. You know, at one time, the youth and young adults program taking place, we had an uh, issue of noise. We had to close it. The little room we had, had to close it to cut out and so forth because the children were running rampant, running wild. I mean, like making noise, shouting, and all that kind of thing. And I thank God for uh, uh, some sisters who came around just to make sure they are kind of guided not to hurt themselves and things like that. But the absence of children ministers among us, you know, it is alarmed me, so to say. That, that's speaking personally. And generally, it's like I, I was telling myself, I don't think that in a gathering like this of apostolics in the United States, there will not be children ministers with uh, a heart to say, okay, let me step in here and make sure that our children are protected, guided, covered, not uh, taught or things like that. So please, I want to throw it out here to us in general, you know, those who are here right now on the, on the committee reporting and to transmit to our brethren from our various churches that in future, you know, and I beg here that children ministers who are already in the churches should immediately step in here. It should not be something we are, it's as if we are, begging for ministers, you know. So they should immediately step in and make sure that this, our generation, our, our future, practice, this is our future practically is taken care of. And, and we, are, we are upstairs thinking of ourselves and rejoicing and jumping and all that. Meanwhile, we, they are left down there just literally to fend for themselves. So please, that, that was something which it touches me so particularly and personally. I said, let me just bring it to our, our, our fathers and our brothers and every one of us. So please help us to uh, see that next time, next time around, you know, it's, just, it's not just that old, oh, Sister Bessem is, you know, has stepped in to, to help us, you know, and then she was there trying to hold the baby here, hold his fine and so forth, you know, not to speak for her personally, but it's a general thing, which anybody who was there could have been, you know, burdened with that kind of uh, a weight when we are here, other ministers in the house, children ministers, enjoying ourselves, so to say, you know, so please, I'll end here, but that is my, the cry of my heart, and I throw it out there to us, our leaders. Yeah, thank you. Um, Lady Gloria wants to make a comment. Yes. Thank you so much for that observation. Uh, I personally, actually, before the convention, tried to recruit um, from people that I had suspected that they are in children's ministry in their local churches, mm -hmm. but I did not get, I think the perspective that I have, and I'm going to be very general, is that they felt that they are in ministry already in their children's ministry at the local churches, and they're coming to the convention, they want to have time away from that for some of them. And so the ones, there was one in particular who signed up, but unfortunately she had an, a death that happened. So she wasn't available for, for, for children's ministry. So that was a handicap, but I consistently contacted people during that. So I, I, I agree with what pastor said. And I also say that if we're going to have an effective uh, planning of the convention, we should set up a committee a year in ahead and start doing recruiting and setting and planning a really long time and not just close to the convention because then nobody's proactively looking at what could happen like this. Uh, and so uh, so I just wanted to suggest that we set that a long time ahead of time and maybe work with the churches, their pastors, and see if they can suggest some of their Sunday school teachers or sponsor them and have them be a part of the convention and help us. 
Thank you very much, Lady Gloria. I think one thing I took from your comment is that we need to set up a planning committee at least one year in advance because it takes a lot of planning to come up with this thing. So hopefully, um, Apostle Fondo is right here. Saknam at this point has taken more of the responsibilities of the convention for obvious reasons. Tacnam has structures that Tac Friends does not have. So, and when Pastor Enonyaket was making his comment, he talked about uh, bringing in Sunday school teachers from from the various churches. Those churches are actually in Tacnam, not in Tac Friends. So, we'll be depending on that. Um, Apostle Fonda intends to finalize the new version of the Tacnam Constitution and appoint national leaders. One of those national leaders is going to be a national Sunday school coordinator. So hopefully, Apostle Fondo, with that one, that coordinator should be able to reach out and bring in some teachers in order to help in these things. Apostle Fondo, I don't know if you have a comment to make on this. There's been a loud cry on the neglect of our younger people. Well, nothing much than what you've already said. A lot of things are set in motion and they're in progress. And uh, as we look forward to the leaders' retreat, a lot will be cemented by then, which will be one year away from Convention 2024. So uh, we are making big progress. Uh, Apostle, let me let me come in uh, just to throw one word here. Uh, I, I think that this uh, should also come from us. I had this observation in the convention. If you look at the time that the children were presenting, almost three quarter of the pastors sitting in front were on their phones. That is just to show you how they, they don't pay attention. They the don't children. value what the children were doing. And it really, <laughs> it, it meant so much to me negatively seeing pastors, you know, being on their phone when the children are presenting. So I, I noticed that. Could it be that they were meditating on their phones, reading the Bible? Of course not. <laughs> well, that, that, that you would be the only person to accept that. Yeah. Uh, Apostle, can I say something on that issue? The phones? This, because I, I mentioned it in my report. Yes. This, is, this is a video here. Maybe we can see those who are on their phones. <laughs> I, from, from the perspective of the Usher's committee, because we are kind of getting a, a glimpse of every single corner of, of, the, of the room or the sanctuary. Uh, I noticed personally, because like I said in my report, they, some will give us the impression that they are using their Bible on the phone, that it's a lie because I personally saw people on Facebook right in the church. I don't let alone pastors. I mean, it's so disheartening. Mm. Like Pastor Innocent said, it's disheartening to see pastors on their phones in church, they are on Facebook, or they are messaging, they are doing something else. And it's not even the Bible, it's not and nothing concerning what is going on. Uh, that said, I was sorry, I want to come back and suggest something concerning what uh, Pastor Enonyaka just said. Um, I want to suggest that if, I mean, for the future, if uh, we finally, at any one point, we get children ministers. I, or I want to plead with, with us that when we come with our kids and the ushers want to get them from us and take them to, because there were days that we actually had those two or three sisters down there for the kids. But we we hold so fast onto our, on, onto our kids. We don't have confidence in whoever is there who is going to take care of the kids. So may we please just when the ushers want to get our kids and take them to where they're supposed to be with the other kids, could we just allow them to do that? Thank you so much, everyone. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Okay, that is Pastor Oscar. Pastor Oscar <laughs> speaking. Yes. So I just want to make an inquiry concerning the youth department. Do they have a text or a kind of syllabus which the teachers used to? teach them or it's up to the teachers to bring out those things they think could be beneficial, beneficial to the youth. And uh, if there is no text or a kind of written program, I think that is something to look into. 
So I'm just, it's just an inquiry. Good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, Pastor Oscar, when the convention was approaching, we actually had a meeting here with my wife and Pastor Zhang Enonyaket, and we just brainstormed on some of the relevant topics that could be um, affecting our youth for today. So that's how those things actually came up on drug abuse, internet, um, um, finance, yeah, but if you have a suggestion of a structured program or structured document that they can follow, that would be very much welcome. Yeah, I think what you people did is good. Everything there was okay. I was just looking at, uh, yeah, maybe if there's something, a text, even a committee or, a committee, or we get something back home, the, the Sunday school program, I think we could uh, maybe do a kind of modification to blend it with what will be very beneficial for them this way. Okay. And I've also found that when the National Youth Coordinator is, is appointed, if it is not Pastor Enon Yake, then that person will work with, with Pastor Enon Yake, at, at least will have a structure then to get these things done. Pastor Judo, do you know that you're a prophet? <laughs> Pastor Enon Yake, I've prophesied about you. That's the implication I have prophesied. If I had my brother is not uh, singing, so let, let me just say a quick something to uh, Pastor Oscar's point, just very quick. So, um, and Pastor Julius already alluded to that. Now, the what we came to finally with respect to the platform for the uh, youth and young adults, where I could su summarize it in terms of relevant issues. Relevant issues are things that actually are, are affecting our young people uh, now and uh, in terms of the society in which they are living and which the church is called upon to, you know, to, to coexist and to, uh, to impact. That's why we, we uh, brought forth this. Now, you, we noticed as we went along that uh, some, some of the things that came up during our uh, communication preparation for the program, we could not tackle them. So it, they go into our bank, into uh, future things that we could have uh, tackle with the young people. Number two, we also realized, and uh, parents among us and that, that we are, we can also attest to this, that programs with the youth and young adults are more effective if input, there's a lot of input from themselves, from themselves. So there are programs that work with ready-made things that we, on this our side, are called, let's say, say adults, whatever name they give to us, adults or whatsoever, that we shape and bring to them, will need to be retailed in such a way that their input, there's a lot of their own input in it. Uh, just to bring that up to us, you know, uh, as we would think, pray and, and think and plan in, for the future. That's very, very important. Yeah, but, yeah, Pastor Zhang Enonyaket, what you just said is important, and this is something we need to learn. Back home in Cameroon, it is from the teacher to the youth. Yeah. In this society, it is not like that. It is exactly. active learning. This society is a society of active learning. So when we are teaching our young people, let us readjust our minds. We need to readjust, make it participatory for them to be a part of the solution. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what Pastor Enonyaket is trying to uh, tell us right there. Uh, there is a book that Pastor Albert Ako, he was just here with us a few days ago. He's in the UK. God is using that man so wonderfully to reach out to youth of all cultures in the, U um, um, in the UK. So he has written a book on finding purpose and fulfilling destiny for youth. <clears throat> that book has about 20 chapters summarize, easy to read, and it is targeting just youth. So Apostle Fonda, the person, and a workbook. Apostle Fonda, the person that you will appoint, I would strongly suggest to that person to work with Pastor Ako, get that book. It's really going to bless our youth. It covers all of these finances. It covers well philosophies. It covers um, a life of excellence, having a vision, it covers uh, purity, uh, uh, yeah, just all of these relevant things. 
that we are trying to brainstorm here. He has already put all of those things together, you know. Okay. Okay, praise the Lord. So any final comments before we close? Hey, good evening. This is Christina. Um, I just have a comment. Those of us who couldn't attend the convention, we really wanted to be part of the breakout sessions. Um, I think the future of the church is virtual, right? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to suggest that next time, if it's possible, we could get like um, Zoom links, like one for the women, one for the men, even personal Zoom rooms, right? Mm -hmm. um, we could just get it so that those of us watching online can be part of the breakout sessions. Because I was just sitting where I was like, oh, I wish I could just even get someone to even call me on audio so I could participate. So that's something I just wanted to bring up. If we could look into that, it will help a lot of us. Thank you. Thank you. So are you prophesying that you will not still be there in 2024? <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, so um, the difficulty that we had with streaming, we mentioned that and our sister's point, we need to go beyond that and try to put these things in place. It's good we're recording this thing when that planning committee is set up, everybody on it will have to listen to this video again, catch up, and then the preparations are done from here. Amen. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, Sister Christabel, Lady Christabel. I just have a comment. I think the doctor about thank God for everything. Thank God for what happened in the convention. They talked about the venue, the venue, the venue. I think you guys, you pastors with the tag and tag now, you people need to get yourself to be in agreement in all your planning things because the Yeah, it looks like your line went off. We can't hear you. Yeah, while she's adjusting her audio, um, Sister Christopher. Oh, yes, are you back? Yeah, can you oh. hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Maybe you can start over. I said, we, we like Dark Nam and Dark Friends, we need to be in agreement in our planning, because I think from the beginning of the whole thing, it seems like you people are not in agreement for the venue. You people are not in agreement for the venue. And the next thing I want to comment here was, um, I think it was some real that somebody was assigned if they needed anything concerning the venue. Uh, yeah, one of the pastors said the pastor was like so very unfriendly and could not even see, he could not see him at all. But there was somebody who was assigned that in case of anything, that they report come to and then he will get a message to be able to contact whoever he needs to be contacted. But nobody came through. <laughs> so what I'm trying to encourage us, like that person, Dagnan, in our planning meeting concerning the venue, they don't have an agreement. There is, there was a, a, a program like the meeting will be in the venue from Thursday to Sunday. On Thursday, it was not on the venue. And that venue has a program on Thursday, the program was canceled. That to take place there. And on Sunday, the pastor communicated with the pastors that were concerned in the planning of the convention. But nobody responded. Nobody responded. He wanted to know if the Sunday there will be a, a service. Because I think if then he knew there was going to be a service on Sunday, then maybe it will not be held in that 
in that in many things. Many things was um, stuck. Many things were pressed down so that the convention will be held. But I heard a lot about the venue, the venue, the venue, and I heard about um, the pastor, the venue being very unfriendly. It didn't really sound well to me because somebody was assigned and pastor someone know that whatever consent of the convention ground, they must report to that person. I think that's just what I wanted to say. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sister Christabel. It looks like your sound was a little difficult. Um, some people said they could not hear what you were saying. But I think the summary of what Sister Christabel was trying to say is that, number one, the pastor of that venue canceled a program on Thursday, thinking that we were going to use his church to start the convention. But instead, we went and used Pastor Sama's church. So there was a miscommunication right there. And then number two, Sister Christabel is referring to that there has been um, comments that the pastor is difficult to reach out to, but that somebody was assigned to be able to, to communicate with the pastor. And so our host pastors had to get to that person in order to get to the pastor. The, that route was not followed. So that encouraged lack of communication between the host pastors and that pastor. Because I think the pastors, the, the pastor of the church, his work, his work schedule keeps him away for most of the day. So when our host pastors are trying to reach him, he's at work, he doesn't pick up his phone. But using that channel, they know when to get to him when he's at home and that kind of a thing. Yeah, so I think those are the two main points I got from Sister Christabel's comment. Yeah, and Pastor Julius, let me make a comment on that. Very excellent, very excellent that we're able to hear uh, on this other side of it because I'm hearing now for the first time that there was a specific person assigned from the pastor's side to communicate with Tacnam uh, host pastors. Pastor Sama is not here to tell us that, but it's something we'll follow up with Pastor Sama very serious to know. Because if the pastor has assigned somebody, then that was great. And that's a channel that we're supposed to follow if we need anything. So that was there's a little bit of miscommunication there. And I think 70% when they mention a venue here, it was more of that miscommunication. And I'm surprised that Thursday was available. Because I believe that when we were concluding that Thursday goes to uh, Pastor Sama's church, it was because Thursday was not available at our at the at the location. Because if it was available, we use all the days one location that was our origin. So a, a big of miscommunication here that we missed. So Pastor Sama is not here. I will follow up with Pastor Sama tomorrow on that. And if if there was a pastor that was as if, if, if this completely goes through. I will personally need to call that host pastor and apologize. Because if he has set up an individual that we needed to contact, that's exactly what we were supposed to do. I have no idea that that was done. So thank you for letting us know. We, we hold these evaluation meetings to follow up things like this and better tomorrow. Amen. And Sister Christabel, uh, um, just a final comment. I think you were supposed to be the person that all communication. I was will... supposed to be the person, yes. I was supposed okay. to be. And on Sunday also, there was an issue. I'm bringing this up because for our next convention, if we're going to another venue there, they are having their own Sunday service. And then it's not properly communicated. It's going to happen again. Because remember, every church has a service on a Sunday. Because there was an issue on Sunday, Pastor Che communicated and wanted to know. I think there is an email attached to that. He wanted to know if we are going to run our programs on Sunday. For me, I thought that this is my first convention out of Cameroon. For me, I thought that after Sunday, people will go to the various um, Daknam and Dak friend churches. You mean after Sunday. Saturday? After Saturday, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then we we'll come in the evening, maybe three o'clock, four o'clock. I think I spoke to Pastor Julius about that. With but he communicated to find out how the service will be on Sunday, but nobody came back to him mm. concerning that. So, wow. so next time, if we are going to another church to accept going to the hotel as 
it was discussed. If we're going to another church to do our service on Sunday morning, I think we'll have the same issue because the church service needs to flow the way they needs to flow. And after that, maybe we'll still be running late for our Sunday meetings, except we're going to rent the hotel, like I said. But if we're going to rent another venue, another church premises, we're going to encounter okay. this difficulty. Okay. But I know Pastor communicated with the people who were involved because he wanted to get a response for what will happen on Sunday, but nobody came back to him concerning okay. that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't think hotel is an option for us because you know hotel will be able to take us with all our noise and volume. <laughs> yeah, Pastor, can... can I say something on that Sunday issue? You you probably forgot too. Okay. Yeah, I remember I had I wanted to I wanted to get to one of the host pastors so we could talk about cones to reserve a, a parking space for pastors. And you had to make a three-way call with the, the first lady of that church. And this okay. issue of the schedule came up or the time. And she confirmed to us that their service on Sunday was going to end before our start time. I don't know that you remember that, that mm -hmm. meeting, that, that, mm -hmm. that three-way call. Yeah. Uh, with, I didn't even, let me say four-way because it was with... Uh, Pastor John Summer and the first lady of the church. Yeah. Yeah, she confirmed that their service was on Sunday would end before our program begins. So she probably did not honor her word. That is why we had issues. We came, we had to wait until the, uh, service, the end of their service and we started late. Okay. So I, I don't know whether it was, we had to, we, we had to just probably give a reminder before, before that Sunday so that she could keep to her word. Yeah, or maybe communicating that through Sister Krista Bear would have been more effective too. Anyway, let, let me let me come. Apostle yes. Mark Fondo, you try to do what you just said you would do because these things I am hearing here today are very new to me. All of us, we we may not pick every call because we think it's a telemarketer. But I have quite a good amount of calls that I, I called um, the pastor. Um, if he had picked, but the summer is not here, he too could say something about that. That somebody was assigned to communicate with us. Um, I, I, I want to hear Pastor Sama tell me that. But Apostle Mark, you just follow up until there is an email. What email address is that? For is it Tap Friends email or Tagnam email? I don't know that really. But it's okay. Sister, if you can help me locate my table in that church, that would please me a lot. I will agree on some of the things you just said that were arranged. I need that table, that one. I will not leave it there for. If actually the pastor and the person assigned was so open like that and we failed him or her, that table, I will come and get it through you, sister, through that person who was assigned. That table should come. Let me be happy. Thank you. Okay, so let us so on this point, let us conclude that Apostle Fonda, Sister Krista Bear, Pastor Associate, Pastor Sama will have a private meeting to sort this communication thing out and also to locate the table that Pastor Associate is referring to. I'll follow up. I'll follow up with Pastor Sama first thing tomorrow yeah. morning. Okay. And if somebody was assigned as such, I'll call. I've spoken to Pastor Chair before, long time before convention, but I'll call Pastor Chair personally to uh, just follow up. Okay. Yeah, Lady Gloria. Yeah, there are a few things that came to my memory too as we we're talking about this, about the location. One of the issues that we have was the garbage, you know, where they put the trash. 
you know, I mean, we had problems with cleaning after we didn't have enough hands. We had even our pastors having to stay behind to help with cleaning because members just left. You know, after each session, they did not stay back. I mean, after we made repeated announcements that nobody should leave without us cleaning. And so very few hands were there at nighttime constantly. We almost made it to the picnic ground. I really late because we stayed back and we had to lock the church and had to do all that. But anyways, and then the second thing I want to say about locations, which I want to just suggest for every location that we go, because um, I know that Pastor Associate had mentioned, even Pastor Sam had mentioned that they had visited the church. But uh, when I call, went to the church, it's when I got to the church that I realized that the, so the schools were not set up, you know, for ready to go. But I think they, it's just that even if we visit the church, I don't think they thought about going and looking at the spaces that will be used for, for the entire convention. So I'm just suggesting for next time, when we go to look at locations, let's make sure that they said, where are we gonna be eating? Where is the service, where are the services gonna be? Where are the children gonna be? You know, we have to come before we set up all those things. And I don't think all of the churches are set up that way, unless they, you know, you know, even if they are, they are set up, we come with a greater number. So we have to kind of look into all that in our pre-convention visit for the, at the location, rather than just come and at the sanctuary and look at the music and all that. Let's also look at the children's hall and the hospitality hall and the kitchen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Evangelist Helen, yeah, I want to... Sorry, Evangelist Helen, yes, um, there is also a follow-up of what the lady gloria just said um concerning just not just trash but i think i've noticed it even when we were going to dallas um i noticed something that bothered me um i think i came one early morning and i met apostle cleaning the church it ought not to be so we have to have an uh, um a, a committee to clean because it's not it's not a good picture. It's it, I mean it really pains us back. I, I, I'm looking at the Maryland how I had to stay with Dickon Emmanuel and my son. We carry trash. We are new in Maryland. I have to be carrying trash and looking for a dumpster where I don't know to dump trash at night. It, it it's really absurd. And uh, we are going, we will be in Dallas. We need to work things out that after the church service, we should stay and clean the sanctuary, get the place ready for the next service. Because one thing I've noticed is that everybody just pack and they leave. You know, bottles are everywhere. I mean, it's trash. It's, I think Sister Christabel, I know she, cleaning the bathrooms. Nobody was there to clean the bathrooms and all those. Those are the nitty gritties that are really, really neglected and it's very important. So the Lord is going to help okay. us to perfect ourselves in those areas. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Evangelist. Um, Helen, I think that that also ties up with Dukin uh, Jambong's point where he said that people need to take time off during conventions. They need to take time off from their work. And I think that is something that pastors in churches have to speak to people. We too, in tech friends, we need to speak to our members. At least be sacrificial during that period. Take time off work and be totally available. Yeah, so thank you for bringing that up. It's been recorded. We'll make sure to emphasize on that. Okay, we are coming up on two hours. Um, I think Evangelist Noah had a comment before we wrap up. Thank you, Pastor, and uh, thanks everyone on the call. And this was my first uh, convention. Um, uh, to follow up with what um, Lady Gloria said about checking a venue, I, I think it will be easier and more effective if we have like a checklist so that whoever is going can easily look at things and check them all because yeah. I don't know, especially for me, <laughs> what I can see and and I'm like, this place is good. But when my wife comes, Daddy, have you checked this? Have you checked that? <laughs> she, she thinks totally different. So if we have like a checklist, it will it will help guide whoever goes to check it out. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Thank that's, you. yes, that's a great point. That's a great point uh, right there. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so if no other comments, 
Pastor Sosia, you are the active leader in the absence of Apostle Fondo. We hand the floor back to you. Final comments, and then you can pray and close us. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Julius. A last comment that I want to make in this convention organization. Um, I have noticed that we always run the conventions without a budget or the budget may be in paper and it's not executed beforehand. I think that better management is people counting the cost. The word of God says that before you go to build, count the cost so you don't build and stop halfway and people pass around and laugh at you. Yeah. I think that moving forward, let us raise the convention fund. How did Laurel succeed to pay hotels for some people who needed that help. It was from a fund that the church raised to help the convention. And that money came up to about $1,500. It came from the members. Once every Sunday, they just put a basket there, convention offering, and people dropped something there. And we had that kind of money. If all churches would do this thing that I am saying, we will be able to have $20,000 in the convention account to be spent. If we have more by offering as we did, it will help us to go a long way and will not depend on members coming to clean the church or clean after us. There are people around you, we could pay them to come and clean. I don't know how many children of God, after enjoying the fellowship that way, the messages and the prayers and everything, then they come and say, oh, let us start picking trash on the floor here while we are going home to come back tomorrow. That is tough. So a lot of some of these things that we are hearing as problems is because we don't have money also. <laughs> I, like I had to be carrying people. Why was my matter so tough i had to pick people from the airport and coordinate you know it was tough all this because we don't have money to sponsor things and the convention is an important thing that we need money on the ground sponsor it before we even start saying that we want to hold a convention i just threw this one so that we can think about it if it is yeah. good yeah important yeah and I have practiced it. We had a thousand five and we could pay hotels for people without any much ado. And some of the picnic people I put together, I had to fuel their cars so that they can run around and not complain about anything. So funding is also our issue. Yeah, and let's can. try to rise up from there. All right, let us pray to close. Father, we bless you and glorify you for the peace of mind. We thank you, Lord Father, for the harmony. We thank you, O oh God, Father, that we can be able to get to hear and fellowship and discuss, O oh, Father, amicably and in love. Oh, it's a blessing that we can be and be your children and exercise these talents and these gifts together. Father God, we have a lot to do. We are still learning. And Lord Father God, we are pushed back our backs are on the wall, oh Lord, with a lot of challenges. Father God, Holy Spirit, you heard it. We present everything at your table. Oh Lord Jesus, you will vindicate. You will fight for us. You will make things better tomorrow. Oh Lord, Father God, this location matter. Father God, we will not complain about where we were. We will not complain about any other place, Father God, but we are reporting to you that we need our own venues also. Yes. And I know, Father God, this is the last time we will go renting venues. 
and I place this in the table of the Lord. Jesus vindicate us and bail us out of this kind of situations in the future. Amen. Thank you, Lord, Father, because you have done more than we can ask. I pray for everyone to be blessed. Oh, Lord, Father, God, reach out, reward, re-reward. Oh, and Lord, Papa, God, that we can be happy that we are your children called and that in the vineyard, Father, we are satisfied. Thank you, Lord, Father, as you go with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you, everybody. So this recording is going to be uploaded for future reference. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.